Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm currently a core anaesthetic trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. And in today's video, I will be sharing with you guys how I studied for my primary FRCA written examinations in September 2023. And I sincerely hope that at the end of today's video, I can reassure you that the examination is not as impossible as it seems. So things that I aim to cover in this video includes the recent changes in the primary written examinations, what are the recent passing scores, textbook recommendations, where to find your SBA, questions online, and also personal study advice. So the format of the examination has been recently changed to 90 single best answer questions from a previous mix between multiple true false and uh, SBA questions. And these are split between three topics, 30 questions in each topic, so in physics, pharmacology, and physiology. Do note there is no negative marking, so do attempt all the questions and you're given about three hours. Now the most common question that people always ask me is how long do you actually have to study for the uh, primary written examination? I personally study on an average of 75 minutes to 90 minutes a day for six months and that gave me a comfortable passing rate in my first attempt. So if you do the maths, you probably have to put in a minimum of 225 hours to stand a good chance of uh, passing the examination. So it really depends on your study method. If you are someone who loves to cram, if you are able to cram well over 200 hours in three months, that's good for you. Pick that study method. But if you're someone who is, tends to be more slow and steady, more consistent like me, six months would be a comfortable period of time to, uh, to study for the examination. So basically, just pick the study method which you enjoy most. As you know that the format of 90 SBAs has been recently introduced, Passing score for the uh, September 2023 sitting was roughly 56% and the passing score for the November 2023 sitting is approximately 54.5%. In my personal opinion, there isn't any easy way to go around studying for the primary written examinations. You basically have to bite the bullet and study for it. Churn in, put in the hours, cover breadth rather than depth because of the wide range of topics that can be tested in all three core topics of pharmacology, physiology, and physics. And the reason why I always tell everyone to focus on breadth is because if you're familiar with a topic which comes up in an examination, you can always narrow down the possible answers to one to one to three possible answers from the five that's given, which dramatically increases your chance of getting the question right. Whereas if you come across an unfamiliar topic in the examination or something that you've not covered, it dramatically decreases your chances of getting the question right because it's basically a Russian roulette of a 20% chance of getting it right if you are unable to narrow down the answers. So I will introduce my textbook recommendations into two classifications called and supplementary. In the core textbooks, these are the ones which I would recommend you to read cover to cover. It's very comprehensive and allows you to build a strong foundation on the topic itself. Whereas supplementary textbooks tends to be the one that helps you to deepen your knowledge on specific topics or revisit important topics for the examination. Now, be aware that these are all my personal recommendations. If you ask other people, they might introduce you different textbooks or have different core supplementary textbooks. Now the core textbook for physiology that I will be recommending is Basic Physiology for Anesthetists, and this is written by David Chambers. I find that this is really comprehensive, easy to understand. They explain concepts in little graphs and also diagrams. The core pharmacology textbook that I will be recommending is Pharmacology for Anesthesia and Intensive Care. And this is written by Tom Peck and Benjamin Harris. The textbook is really comprehensive in explaining pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and pharmacology of the different medications that you need to know. The only downside is that this book is very, very dry, lots of text, very little graphs and diagrams, but you know what, pharmacology is a very dry topic anyway, so you just have to muscle through it. And lastly, the physics textbook that I will be recommending you is by Ben Middleton. It's called Physics and Anesthesia, and this book I can't emphasize is the best out of all three. This book is not only concise, but it helps to explain difficult concepts in simple terms. Physics was my weakest link, but while studying for the examination, I found that this book was the most enjoyable and interesting out of all three. Right, so let's move on to the supplementary materials and textbooks. The first I would highly recommend is the Royal College online revision course by the college themselves. Now you do have to pay for this, 
but I think it's worth your money because it allows you access to a wide range of lectures delivered by consultant initiatives themselves. It also have at least 50 SBA sample questions and answers in it and you're guided through it by a consultant initiatives. And purchasing the online revision course would also allow you to have a discount on the guide to the FRC examination, which also would give you more uh, SBA questions in the book itself. The next supplementary material I would recommend is the e-learning for health. If you've signed up for the e-learning for health, they do have an ELA anesthesia, which gives you a wide range of mini lectures SBA questions and also access to three free small PDF textbooks on physiology, pharmacology and uh, physics. I can't say much about the mini lectures because I've not looked through it but I would highly recommend the three free small PDF books and the wide range of uh, multiple true false questions and also SBA questions that are widely available for you under the tab on uh, exam preparation. The next textbook that I would recommend would be the Equipment in Anesthesia and Critical Care. This is it falls between a core and supplementary textbook because it has overlaps between your physics book but it has a core focus on the anesthetic equipment. I would highly recommend. I've not read this cover to cover but whenever I really don't understand a specific equipment, this, this is a book that you will go to because it has detailed explanation on the anesthetic equipment or surgical equipment that you'll be exposed to as an anesthetist. Now the last supplementary book that I would recommend would be Physics, Pharmacology and Physiology and this is by Cross and Plunkett. Most people would define this as a core textbook but the reason why I don't is because although this textbook describes in great detail important concepts and topics in physics pharmacology and physiology, it doesn't describe it in great depth and detail as the other three core textbooks. So if you start this textbook off as your first textbook, you will be overwhelmed with uh, unfamiliar terms and definitions which makes it quite difficult for you to understand. Now we'll just talk a bit about um, where you can find uh, SBA questions that you can practice on. If you've already uh, subscribed to the eLearning for Health, there's about 15 SBA questions on the uh, platform itself, on the online revision course and the uh, guide to primary FRC examination book by the college. You will have access to up to 80 SBA questions and also on the college website itself, if you go into uh, the online resource section, there will be at least 20 questions that you can practice on with answers given. So in total, you will have at least 100 uh, SBA questions by the college themselves if you've um, seen my uh, video. But if you're unsatisfied and you still want more, there are lots of question bags out there. The only one that I've used was a BMJ on examination. It can be quite pricey, but it does have a wide reasonable amount of uh, SBA questions and multiple true false questions that you can actually practice on. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope I've convinced you it's not an impossible task taking on the uh, primary written examination. It is like a rite of passage. Everyone has to go through it. You just have to churn in the hours and know where to look for your, uh, your SBA questions. Now, if you found this video in any way helpful, please give me a like and subscribe because it does motivate me to make more videos for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section down below or just um, add me on Instagram, Dr. Yo Yo, and you, uh, we can have a chat down there. If not, have a nice day and all the best for your exams.